Crank is the best movie ever made. It's the movie making equivalent of snorting coke from a dirty floor. It's so good but so filthy. And then Crank 2 comes along. Crank 2 is a different kind of filthy. It's the movie making equivalent of shoving a shotgun up a guy's ass. <laughs> nah, no, that doesn't make any sense. It's kind of hard to describe the exact feeling having just watched both of these movies. But this video isn't a review of my feelings on the Crank movies. It's a plot holes episode. So while I describe what's happening in the story, you can just decide your feelings for yourself. Tell me in the comments how you felt watching Jason Statham waffling his hand in a waffle iron. The basic premise of the Crank movies is this. Jason Statham is an ex-hitman who constantly has to absorb adrenaline to keep his heart pumping. He does this because he was kidnapped and injected with a Chinese poison. This poison will kill him if his heart rate drops too low. Crank 2 is basically the same, but this time with electricity. It sounds stupid because it... it is. Both of these movies are centred around a three-point chase sequence. Point A, Jason Statham wakes to find his heart has been poisoned or is missing. Point C, on the other end, Jason finds the guy responsible for his kidnapping slash compromised heart situation and kills them. But point B. Point B is the juicy centre of that chase. Like watching Jason Statham restore his PP by using an electric dog collar. Huh? Oh, disgusting. Oh, I think Mama would be so proud. Sorry about that. Give me that thing. Come on, you know you want to watch more of that. Crank 1, point A. Cranky boy wakes up feeling all dizzy, like he's on drugs or dying from a specific Chinese poison. He's not too sure which one it is yet. Maybe this copy of Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker will have the answer he needs. Looks like Cranky boy has made some enemies because he took out a hit on a Chinese mafia boss. And now the specific Chinese poison is killing him unless he can keep his heart pumping. Oh my! With his impending death, he makes two very important phone calls. One to get hold of his greasy but genius doctor, and the second call to his girlfriend who I can't wait for you to meet. But he can't get hold of either of them right now, so it's time for some juicy point B stuff. Point B. Cranky Boy hunts down Ricky Verona. Cranky Boy doesn't so much as follow the trail of breadcrumbs as he does snort it from the ground. This is not going to be your average seen a million times type action movie. Because every time Cranky Boy stops, he needs an immediate hit of adrenaline. For example, car surfing on escalators while police chase you for a mall. Robbing a store of enough energy drinks to give a tortoise a harder shell. And chopping off this guy's wanking hands. Uh, which at this point, you might as well just shoot him dead. I mean, what's the point in living, right? We then get a nice cameo from Chester Bennington, giving drug advice to Cranky Boy. Nasal spray. It's got epinephrine in it. It'll get you tweaked, man. God damn it, Chester, we miss you. Dennis from Always Sunny in Philadelphia gets a cameo too. I fucking love cameos. And I love you, Crank One. I suppose we should probably move this story along now before it starts to get stale. Cranky Boy finally gets to his girlfriend's house. This is Amy Smart. She's a great asset to these movies. No, I know what you're thinking. I'm not just saying that because she's a great character. She's actually kind of hot too. Not that this is very important, but I should probably mention that Cranky Boy never took out the hit on that Chinese boss man. He instead offered him a chance to disappear. 
I only mention this because he will come back later in a plot twist, so you can look forward to that happening. In the meantime, we get to see Cranky Boy and Amy Smart getting down in Chinatown. You get a brief glimpse of Amy Smart's nipple and Jason Statham's arse cheek. I like to cater to all tastes in my Kickstarter business, Titty Testicle Timestamps Limited. As my first loyal customer, I'll give you an insider tip. Crank 1 and 2 combined gives you around 90% Amy Smart boob. We've got a 70% reveal right here in this movie, as you can see, combined with an additional return of 20% if you invest in Crank 2. As you can see, we have more breast area visible, but that has lower market share value than nipple and areola. But let's just say you're not willing to invest your time into two movies. Let's say you need a 100% return with minimal time expenditure. Then I recommend watching Road Trip. Fully visible breast, nipples and areola right here. Business, it's planned. Investors? Possibly you! It's coming to a head in Cranky Boy's chase story as he's pinned down Verona's location to some weird sexy hotel place with women in plastic balls. How they haven't passed out from dehydration and heat stroke is incredible. It's also incredible that as Cranky Boy is about to be killed off by Verona, the Chinese boss from earlier appears as a surprise backup. No one saw it coming. Especially not you. Verona tries to escape in a ghetto bird, but a juiced up cranky boy is clinging to his chopper's cheek like a stubborn turd. A turd he can't seem to shake off. This results to them both plummeting down to their deaths. And that brings us nicely to the opening of Crank 2, where we find out that to bring Cranky Boy back to life, they just need to replace his heart with an electric one. Because as everyone knows, when your body plummets 200 meters like a meteorite into a car, the only thing that needs replacing is your heart. The opening of Crank 2 is kind of unsettling in a unique way. I can watch the disgusting, beautiful process of a cow giving birth, but my mind shudders at the thought of this guy flicking cigarette ash into his exposed organs. Let's skip to Jason being fixed up with his replacement heart. Oh, no wait, I can't really skip. Y y you might be wondering why he's being fixed up in the first place. Well, basically, a Chinese Mafia boss, it's a different one from before, wants Cranky Boy's organs to replace his so he can be young again. They've done taking his heart out, but Cranky Boy overhears them talking about harvesting his pee-pee. And that makes him extra cranky. Two. High voltage. As the title implies, he is now kept alive by electricity rather than adrenaline. The doctor explains the technical aspects of an artificial heart, but I don't care. Yeah, we can skip that. We've got point B hijinks to watch while we scoff down salty popcorn and laugh like simpleton slobs. <laughs> We're off to a good start as far as point B stuff goes, with Cranky Boy jump-starting his nipples and tongue. I'm not sure why you would ever agree to help out a stranger with this bizarre request, but it is Jason Statham asking. I probably wouldn't dare say no. Shortly after this, we meet one of the best side characters in these crank movies. You want sticky? Sticky. I forgot her name, but let's call her Sex Worker Sally. Sex Worker Sally insists on helping Cranky Boy after he beats up this Doritos loving good boy. And she quickly comes to fucking hating Amy Smart. It's now occurring to me how much of these clips will need blurring. Aww. 
I'm sorry if doing this kind of pisses on your viewing pleasure, but I don't really have a choice. Anyway, sex worker Sally knows the location of Johnny Vang, so he allows her to tag along. Johnny Vang is the laughing, ashing the organs Chinese guy, by the way. <laughs> He's currently holding Cranky Boy's heart in a box. So yeah, I'm not very good at communicating useful information. I prefer telling you information about Cranky Boy tasering his own balls and tongue for our amusement. This stripper in the back of Cranky Boy's car is far better at filling you in on what's happening. For example, she just provided a valuable lead that Johnny Vang is at the horse racing track right now. So that's where we are going next. Thank you, sleazy stripper. En route to the horse track, we get to see this dog collar scene. This scene is followed by a really stupid scene where we meet another side character. This side character has a condition called full body Tourette's. I think they fabricated this condition for comedy purposes. Now I don't like jokes made at the expense of human ferret balls. I only bring up this side character because he will come back later in a surprise plot twist to save Cranky Boy in a shootout, so you can look forward to that happening. Cranky Boy has now arrived at the horse track and he's trying to get a static charge from Chester Bennington. The fuck, man? Now is it just a coincidence that Linkin Park has a song called High Voltage? Probably yes. In his quest for finding friction, he finds himself ploughing Amy Smart on the horse track. And it is here we learn a very quick way to make the average man lose his boner during intercourse. You simply say the line, Give Kitty some more cream. Give the kitty some more cream. I just... Uh, is that hot? Johnny Vang watches from the audience and catches Cranky Boy's line of sight, and so the chase commences. The scene this chase leads to is what can only be described as creative genius. As a person who comes his pants whenever Godzilla arrives on scene, this experience made me change my pants. Unfortunately, this fight was all for nothing, as it turns out Johnny Chang didn't have his heart all along. But it's all good because the creepy doctor has been tracking down the real person carrying his heart. And like I said earlier, it's this old guy right here. Oh shit. Oh no. We, we, we've got a problem here. Uh, there's a genuine plot twist in the story that I forgot to mention in my notes. Alright, so don't be mad, but basically Cranky Boy never gets his heart back. He gets captured by the gang and they take him to their big boss who tortures him for all he's done. And Ferret Boy from earlier arrives on scene with his leather clad army. You know, the name Ferret Boy, as I'm now finding out, was a bad name to choose. Forgetting completely that the mob boss also has the nickname Ferret. But we're basically at the end now, so... The ferrets go to war while Cranky Boy looks for one last big electrical juice boost for the final showdown. A now fully fired up Cranky Boy takes out his final foe, and in a state of delirium sees Amy Smart one last time. Cranky Boy achieved nothing but revenge, he was a man destined to die from the start, and now blissfully unaware that he's kissing the wrong stripper. That makes the end of Crank's story kind of bittersweet, and a real reminder to look after your heart. Stay healthy, eat your chicken tenders, and give this kitty his cream by subscribing. <laughs>